hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back y'all with a brand new review for married at first sight season 17 episode 20 decision day part one okay because we still got michael and chloe to go i don't know y'all i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hang in there with michael and chloe if i do i might just watch the episode and then post on my community tab they said yes or they said no but y'all let's get into it if we gonna get into it so it's decision day. We finally made it, y'all. Everyone is doing their diary cam, and today they decide to say no. Nobody should be saying yes. Everyone should be saying no. So Becca tells us in her diary cam that Austin left. He left the apartment, and she hasn't spoken to him since. Child, Austin always leaving. Get out right now. It's the end of you and me. <laughs> <laughs> baby Austin always on the run do you hear me this should be an easy episode because everybody needs to say no nobody likes each other so let's get right into it so Austin and Becca they show up Austin said a part of him wants to say yes but he doesn't know what she wants Austin please I don't have time for this okay I really don't have the mental capacity or bandwidth to deal with you and your foolishness and your backwards cap I just don't have it in me so the experts gathered to talk about the couples. Dr. Pepper said she thought that Austin and Becca were going to be seamless. Everything seemed so great. She has no idea why things went awry. So then Dr. Pia said, you know, I feel like Austin lacks emotional maturity. And I think that's something that Becca does have. There are things that he needs to work on. There is chemistry. Is there? Because I just see two people going along to get along. Really and truly, I think the chemistry died when they walked down the aisle. But that's just me. So Pastor Cal said, well, you know, what I see is something valuable. We really have something valuable here. So we see a flashback of Becca and Austin from their I do's until decision day. Now, when I was watching, I was like, man, it's kind of sad seeing that spark and light in Becca's eyes slowly extinguish. Like, it's just sad. Austin and Becca see each other for the first time, right? They come to the couch. They sit down. Nice to see you. Dr. Pepper asked them, what's going on? So Austin said, well, you know, we weren't able to handle our issues in a healthy way and we don't know how to manage them. So then Becca says, well, you know, I feel like I wasn't being authentic per Austin's instructions. But then I started speaking up and speaking my speech, baby. And he was worried about the optics of it all. This is what I want y'all to do. Every time I say optics in the review, I want one of y'all to just hit the like. Just hit the like button for me because the way that these people said optics, 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 optics all damn day was something else. Moving forward. She said she felt silenced. Like, you know, Austin just wanted to do what he wanted to do and that was just it. He was trying to control her. So he claims it's not the only thing that he was worried about. He wasn't just worried about the optics. He feels like she doesn't trust him on or off camera. Austin, it's because you're fake. Okay, you're fake. You have been exposed, honey. And Becca is walking on eggshells. So I'm hoping that this is a no. It's too much of an emotional toll. It really is. And Pastor Cal love to try and coerce the women into staying. That lady is crying every second. Let's wrap this up. So then Dr. Pia said, well, I mean, you guys always seem so great. Becca said, well, Austin was a lot more, you know, affectionate on camera than he is off camera. Austin in his dunce cap are lying, honey. He don't like you like that. Now, Austin starts spewing something, honey, but I was halfway listening. And I was like, okay, now, Dr. Pia, don't piss me off. Telling Becca, well, you know what you need to do right now? Because I'm thinking it's anxiety. Just tell your anxiety to shut up for a moment. No, ma'am. She knows what she lived for eight weeks. We know y'all want the numbers. We know you want the yeses. We know you want them to come in and make you guys look good. Truth be told, all of you should be down to HR. Okay? <laughs> Every last one of you. Mm -mm -mm. Now it's time for the decisions, right? After Becca has told her anxiety to shut the hell up. Becca says, well... I'm saying no to where it's been, but yes to where it could be. So they're like, is that a yes? If this woman says yes, then I know something. Because there is no way, rhyme or reason, that Becca should say yes to Austin. But let's hear it. This dang on woman y'all said yes. Austin also said yes. And I think that Austin should have gone first. Because this is what I gathered from that. He does not want to look like the bad guy. 
So Becca said, yes. So how dare he say no? Because if he says no, then everybody's going to be in an uproar over on the Twitter, a.k.a. X. And then he's going to have to answer to that, turn his comments off, turn his hat around. It's going to be too much drama. OK, it's just going to be too much drama. So I think that that's why he said yes. But you know what, Becca? Whatever you and Austin and his hat get from this shim sham of a marriage is on you. Moving forward. Child, all them dang on tears for nothing. Had me going up for you on a Tuesday and you sitting up here talking about yes to what could be. I am officially done with Married at First Sight after this season. Let me just go ahead and put my disclaimer out there. There has to be something really good coming from Married at First Sight for me to watch. Okay, because they have gotten on my nerves, child. So now we see the BFFs, Brennan and Emily. Emily, this is just a side note. Girl, that color looks nice on you. Okay, girl. So they are both saying that they feel uneasy. I don't know why. He was going on dates while you were still healing your stitches. Just let it go, honey. Like Elsa said, go on, let it go. They flash back to Emily and Brennan from this highlight reel. You would think everything was a bed of roses when it was really a married at first sight nightmare. And we know, and you ain't fooling us. But anywho, they played the highlights and Emily falling down and whatnot. Brennan, you know what? I also want to say this to you because I, I rarely ever give you compliments. But you look like a decent human being in this suit. You really do. You could never tell you were a fool. You look really decent. And you almost knocked Dr. Peppers over, okay? So be careful. <laughs> Brennan came in to hug everybody. And you know Dr. P will make him nervous, honey, because you know they stay going at it. So, child, he trying to get over there to Dr. Pia and dang near knock Dr. Peppers on the floor. You know she light as a feather. Child, please don't knock her over. So, anywho, they came in. They sat down. Emily, baby, I see you came in to show him what, you, what he was missing out on, honey. I see you. And I saw how he was looking at you, too, when you sat down. Oh, put your freakum dress on. <laughs> baby, shout out to Beyonce. So, she comes in. She sits down. He comes in. He sits down. Brennan sits down and starts lying, talking about, well, you know, I used to run at the first sign of trouble, but now I'm doing, sir, you're a runner, you're a track star, you're gonna run away when it gets hard, you run, so I do not know what you're talking about, Emily said, uh, no, sir, you are a runner, now, I don't know exactly when you stopped being, but in this relationship, you ran, so then Dr. Pia says, well, do you see that you're being defensive, because they were kind of going back and forth about it. He said, yeah, I see the attack. Everybody is like, there's no attack. You know what? Brennan is always the victim. Dr. Pia said, well, there was some homework that you didn't even do. So he did admit that he didn't do the homework, but then he turned around and blamed the exercise on all of this mess. So as they're going back and forth and forth and back, Emily reveals how he tried to control her and the way he treated her anytime the cameras were down, when she went against him and broke his trust there was hell to pay. And then he started talking about the positivity versus the negativity. Brennan, that's groundbreaking. <laughs> Y'all remember what Emily said last episode that her being negative was groundbreaking? Mm -mm -mm, what an unfortunate turn of events. Honey, shout out to Clint. These two cannot stand each other. Brennan is a douchebag that, like Austin, wants to look good on camera. This man said that he was trying to protect her. Say what now? He said the reason why he was not letting her post certain things is because he was trying to protect her image. Pastor Cal said, uh, okay. Now everybody's pissed like, okay, this is enough. He tells Brennan, accountability is something that you need to do because what I see is BS. Dr. Pia said, thank you. He said, can I say that? Is that okay to say? She said, I mean, it's real. Oh, baby. Dr. Pia is not here for Brennan and his gaslighting ways. I know that's right. Pastor Cal then says he could spot the BS from the first time he met with them. Brennan was claiming that he wanted to stay when he really didn't want to stay married. And Brennan, you knew that was a lie. You didn't even want to stay in the shared apartment after the honeymoon. So I would have known as well that you were faking the funk. So then Dr. Pia says to him that she hasn't heard him apologize to Emily. So then he starts going on his little tirade. So then Emily just laid it all out there. So as she's talking, this man gonna say, I see what I did now. I see that now. I shouldn't have protected you. Get real, Brennan. If you could be anything, including divorced, please be for real. You should not have protected her the same way you should not have helped her after she had her accident. I don't understand. See, this is why 
I have a hard time when people do things for me because then they do it, then they throw it in your face. But in your case, you were not protecting Emily. You were not. So then Emily said, well, you know what? He told me that he had enough to ruin me on national TV. The way that he sits there and takes a sip of that water, baby, he is giving unstable. When she was talking, the way that he can just sit and not explode, but in his mind, he is fuming. It's no way. Mm -mm. It's, it's no way. So Pastor Cal says, well, you know, he sees that they are irretrievably broken and he will not fight for them to stay married. Oh, child, I'm glad because I just knew y'all were going to try to spin this. Emily says, you know what? I deserve better. I, I deserve respect. So I want a divorce. Now, he claimed that he did his best. Well, child, if that was your best, I hate to see your worst. He tries to throw one last dig talking about, you know, we didn't really mesh on the physical or the emotional level. Physical? Brennan really thinks that he's God's gift. Every ounce of so-called accountability that he took was to look good. Because they were like, well, Brennan, we're happy that you did at least take accountability and you can see your wrongs. If y'all sat here and believed that Brennan was actually taking accountability for what he did, this is the reason that we need new experts and new casting people because y'all cannot discern who these people really are. This man does not mean any of this. She just told you that he told her, don't play certain things. Don't do this. Erase the diary cams so he could look a certain way. He wants to look good on TV. And y'all believe he was taking accountability? Okay. So it's a no for them both. I mean, as we all knew, Emily left crying. Now, this is what I did notice. When Pastor Cal said, I call BS and he looks to Dr. Pia and he says, can I say that? And she said, well, I mean, it's real. And you know, they were having, you know, they were having, they were having that kind of talk. And Dr. Pepper was just sitting there. And then when he left, Dr. Pepper was very empathetic to Brennan. Talking about, let me know if you need anything. He needs some therapy. I said, oh, okay, she kind of like Brennan a little bit. Child, this is a fool. Emily, let me just say this to you, honey. I'm speaking directly to you. You dodged the hugest bullet. And I hope in the future you find a person that values and respects you. Okay, you don't have to settle for this. Now, I know this was your first run at a relationship, but this ain't it. And not all relationships are like this. So I don't want you to go into something else thinking that this is what it's like because it's not. This man is a manipulator and a gaslighter. And not everyone is like that. Child, this girl came in full of life and now she's leaving talking about I'm going to get some therapy this is awful. It's only been eight weeks. Child, this is crazy. Moving forward. Becca and Austin. So Becca and Austin, they're talking and she's telling him, you know, that she wants to refocus on herself and clear her lens because it's blurred. I'm convinced that these two made a pact. Okay, I am. They're over on the side and she's talking about she want to clear her lens. Why are y'all even still together? I'm not even listening to Becca or Austin because Becca, you chose this life. For the second time, he is not going to be any different off camera. I can guarantee you that. Cameron and Claire. Claire says, you know, she thought that Cameron was very handsome upon first seeing him. And he has a lot of great qualities. And when they're together, it's easy to laugh and be themselves. Claire, you do know we watched the show, right? When did y'all laugh together? It was always awkward AF. You didn't know if he was attracted to you. He didn't know if you wanted to kiss or touch. It was awkward. And y'all were only around each other for five minutes. She says she feels sad because she had hope, but she's grateful that she experienced what she did with him. So then he says, you know, the first time he thought, wow, Cameron wanted some kisses and he ain't fooling me. <laughs> Baby, Cameron wanted some marital kisses. And uh, aside from that, why are they even here? They have been done since week five. Dr. Pepper asked Claire about when Cameron got ill. And so Cameron said, you know, when he got sick, he wanted her to know that she had no obligation to him and she didn't have to be committed to that. He wanted to handle it by himself. So Claire felt like she wanted to be there and he didn't want her there. So then Claire was like, you know, there were so many misunderstandings in our relationship. Now I have to be honest, honey, I'm sorry, y'all. I checked out when Claire and Cameron started talking. They were talking about her body. Apparently, she said that he, he said that she wasn't physically fit. I don't know. Okay, I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you. These two are talking about absolutely nothing. I don't give a damn. Because y'all shouldn't even be talking to me right now. Y'all really shouldn't. Y'all were already separated. 
Therefore, in thus and such, what are we doing here? But when I checked back in, <laughs> Cause child, I went to go take a refreshing beverage break. But when I checked back in, both were taking genuine accountability for their part of the issues in their relationship. Now, I think these two were just both in their heads. I do believe that there's some truth to what each of them are saying. I don't think it's just any one person. I do think also that they're better off as friends. So then Pastor Cal says, well, I mean, if you divorce, then say that. Or do you two want to get to know each other after it all and give it another shot Cameron says well you know I see Claire as a sister say what now <laughs> a sister so then Claire honey she was taken aback like I know you didn't you and your bicycles Claire said you know what I would like to get a divorce but I respect him oh I'm happy we got that out the way Claire said it felt very strange to hear divorce in regards to her girl count it all joy sis okay count it all joy Cameron said that he's happy that they're leaving on good terms. Good luck, Chuck. Moving forward. So, child, we see Becca telling us in the diary cam that Claire and Emily were out and they saw Austin and Brennan out with the producer. And she's confused because those optics don't look good either. Uh, sorry, Pink. I don't give a damn because you knew exactly who Austin was. You know he's full of it. You notice and anybody that hangs with Brennan cannot be trusted. And not him being out with a producer. Now, was he worried about the optics or what that producer might think? Child, these two could be together, allegedly. Child, I don't put nothing past nobody, okay? One day after decision day. So everybody has chosen the no's and the eh of it all. Okay, Becca and Austin, they don't know what's going on. Everybody is meeting up. Lauren and her cleavage are back on the block. <laughs> I said, baby, Lauren got all them bosoms out today. Everyone is meeting up. Chloe and Michael come through hand in hand. Okay, we need to hear from y'all. What's going on? Emily and Claire, when the group was sitting down, they were talking about what they did. And Becca is being passive aggressive, asking Austin, um, well, what'd you do when the other night? He said, I went out. Well, who all was there? He said, uh, just a group of friends. So there were no producers there. He's like, I mean, no, I, I, don't, I don't know, Becca. I don't know. So he lied and acted like he wasn't out with the producer. She's pissed because he was out with a female producer. I guess this is stemming from the insecurities of him not acting like he was really attracted to her. And then all of a sudden, instead of you working on your relationship with her and getting it popping, you out with the producer. So when he lied and said that he wasn't, the ladies chime in and they're like, now, come on now, don't lie. You know that you were out with a producer. Becca says, did you come here for marriage or to be friends with a producer. He said, I came here for marriage. You know, we just all ran into each other. Okay, well, if you all ran into each other, then why did you lie? Like, what, what are you talking about? So she's going off, okay? And everybody's just sitting there looking. I was like, oh, this is awkward. Now, I was expecting her to pull him to the side. But Becca said, look, the gloves are off. You have pissed her off. So she looks at everybody because she knows they're probably secretly judging her. The men, of course. And she said, I've been calm and collected this whole season, but now I'm speaking. So then he starts saying that that's not true. She's admitted to being sensitive and emotional. So then the girls jump in. He was like, wait, 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 let me finish. He said, when there's an argument, she goes into flight or fight mode. So then she says, yes, I do. And in therapy, I learned that I do that when I don't feel safe and I don't feel safe with you. So then Becca says, you know, my intuition was correct about you and now you're lying and, you know, you're always concerned about the optics. And I, I, if I hit optics one more time, child, she was like, you're just always concerned about that. And I felt like I was going to say no because of the authenticity of you and the things that you say and do. Girl, give him hell, Becca. Go on ahead, honey. It's about time you woke up. You've been asleep all season long. So then Austin says, well, you know, my priorities were misplaced, but it wasn't intentional. She said, that's the thing. I am never a priority. Becca tells him that she thinks that he will find someone who will truly not be as sensitive as she is. There's somebody out there for him. She's given him so many chances. So then Lauren says, well, so what are you saying, Becca? She's like, I'm saying heated things because I'm really angry. Pull the plug, Becca. Piss or get off the pot. 
So then Austin says, well, you know, I thought that I was improving, but I don't feel that way. So I just don't know. I, I don't know where we go from here. You know, the relationship has gone to an unhealthy place. I just don't know. She said, oh, you don't know. So then Emily asked Becca, she said, do you feel like after today, you're still going to feel the same way you did on decision day? Or do you want to be done with this? So at this point, they're like, honey, come on over to the dark side, honey. Let's all be miserable together. And Becca, if you're not going to stand on it, then hush. She gonna say, well, I'm just so confused. So then Claire goes, well, you know, there was like a running theme of the ladies being silenced. And I felt that way when Cameron was mad at me when I told Emily about Brennan going on the double date. So Cameron said, oh no, sister, you silenced me. I have always stood by what you said. I've always agreed with you up until that point. So then Claire goes, well, do you want to say anything to Emily? Cameron tells Emily, you know, I told her I didn't think that we should be getting involved in your relationship but everything was basically his idea so then claire said no it was in the moment not after this so child they're going back and forth and forth and back now cameron and claire fussing go on cut the cameras just go on cut the cameras off they can fade the screen to black claire said cameron is lying and then cameron's like no you're a lie sis because you know she's his sister now <laughs> baby everybody is fussing it's so chaotic and emily is pissed honey now we seeing the emily from them after parties so then cameron said i lied every day in this marriage to protect her so emily is piping up saying yeah you guys always think you're protecting us but you're really hurting us and carrying us around and around we don't need your protection i said oh baby there's that after party of, um emily honey here comes Brennan talking about, we can just agree to disagree. Like we don't need to be fighting each other, just fighting. We've gotten nowhere. Well, baby, what'd he say that for? They were all like, what? We haven't gotten anywhere. Y'all know what? The so-called experts have really messed with these people's heads. The women have all found each other and leaving worse than when they came. I know Brennan not trying to be the voice of reason either. I was like, sir, if you don't hush respectfully, Please be quiet. Don't nobody want to hear nothing out your rabbit mouth. Not nothing. Moving forward. So then Cameron walks away and he does a confessional. He said that Claire was telling him to not say certain things on camera and manipulating him. He was the one being silenced. He was doing a confessional and Claire was texting him to try to make sure that he wasn't saying the wrong thing. I said, baby, nothing pointing the camera to Claire as she's texting him. And I believe him a little bit after seeing her sitting there texting. I think both of y'all are equally silencing each other. Y'all cancel each other out. This is the battle of the sexes. Cameron ended up leaving because it's too much stress. He can't take too much. So after the brawl for it all, Michael asked what's next. Hopefully better help, but let's see what they got to say. Emily goes over to Brennan. She starts crying about things that impacted them and saying she wasn't perfect and it wasn't all him. Baby, this is giving a trauma bond. Do you hear me? And I don't think people really understand what a trauma bond is. I see people say, oh, they're trauma bonding. A trauma bond is not people who have all gone through trauma bonding. No, a trauma bond is a person who has experienced trauma at the hands of someone else and the person that caused it, they can't let that person go. They're literally bonded to them through trauma. That is the definition of that. And what Emily is exhibiting right here is just that. Because, girl, you just got through going off. Now you're standing up here crying and telling them, you know, it was me too. He said, well, I hope that we can be civil. They get up and they hug it out. Child, I'm so confused with these people. Lauren tells Orion, friendship is back on the table. Child, she then asked uh, Michael and Chloe how things are going with them. She said, you know, we're in a really positive place and we're really just accepting each other for who we are. Well, child, y'all better stay away from these people if you want to stay positive. All the men looking at Michael like, okay, okay, show off. <laughs> Baby, because Michael was sitting there pouring into Chloe, telling her how much of a wonderful person she is and such a better, much better human being than he is. And honey, how he can breathe when he looks at her. Baby, he was just landing on thick. Do you hear me? And all the men were sitting there like, oh, okay. So Becca said, you know what? It's just refreshing to see Michael and his emotional intelligence. Ooh, child, the shade. So then Orion said, well, are you looking to build a bridge? Hush, Orion. I almost didn't realize you were there. Just be quiet. She said, well, I mean, I feel like if I can't trust him, 
there might be a bridge in the future. I feel like he'll be the perfect person for someone else, but I don't think it's me. Child, not breaking up in front of the group. She dumped him in front of the group. Austin gets in the confessional. He said, I feel blindsided. Austin, you know full well you are happy dancing on the inside. You are happy that she pulled the plug. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy. You are very much for real in this moment. Be for real. Moving forward. So then Becca starts to cry again. Oh, Becca, please. And she says that Austin is not the person for her. And he's not. I am so tired of Becca subjecting us to this crying, honey. Cut the cord. He is not your person. This experiment got zero matches. When do these people get their year end review, honey? Because it's time to do some LinkedIn searches for new experts. Because this right here is a fool. And that was the end of the episode. Child, y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought. I mean, getting these people together to fight and fuss, it just was crazy. And the fact that some of these people actually are more damaged than they were coming in just shows that this might be torture. We might need to shut this down. I'm thinking this might need to be the last season. I know that the people are in the business of making money, but it's just not fun anymore. It's not fun to watch. It's not entertaining. You can't see yourself in these people. This is just crazy. Anywho, y'all comment down below. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.